Hi patrons. Today I'm going to be showing you how I created the portrait of this dog called Patch. He's a beautiful beagle dog and I created this portrait for my client as a gift because she'd already ordered a lot of portraits from me so I want to do something really nice for her. Now I've started with the white luminance pencil. I've sketched in the highlights on the, both eyes. I've pressed really hard for that to make sure that that white spot is protected on the paper before going over with the black. And then with the black pencil I've sketched in the pupil and also the shadow on the top part of the iris. You've got to make sure you get that shadow in otherwise the eyes won't look realistic and they'll look very flat. The shadow on the top is from the eyelid and there's always a bit of a shadow on the top half of the eye. I then used terracotta for a light layer over the base of the eye and then went over with sanguine to add a bit more of a richer reddy brown colour. And then I've also used kaput mortem on the darker shadowed area of the iris. I then blended out using Erla Solvent. The brand I use is called Art Spectrum, but any Erla Solvent should work the same way. And I use, use that on a number zero filbert brush just to get that fine detail in the eye. And I don't use very much on the brush itself. I um, wipe the excess off of the brush before using it on the paper. Now I've just gone over the eye using those same colours just to intensify the colour a bit and make the layers look better and then I blend it out again. I find after the first lot of layers you tend to have to then add more pigment on top because the the solvent pushes the uh, pigment into the white spots of the paper and so then you end up with it looks like you've lost pigment but you haven't actually. Um, it's just that it's been pushed into the white little flecks of the paper so then you do more layers to get that rich colour back. And I'm just using a little bit of the white pencil on around the eye to just lighten up that bottom part of the iris as well as on the highlight itself. Now just using the black pencil to sketch in the dark shadowed area around the eye. I like to do um, that with the black because around eyes, especially uh, dog eyes, I mean it depends on what you're drawing and always check with your reference photo, but with most dog eyes they do have a very dark sort of area around the eye. And then I just sort of sketched it in, making sure to leave that little light line, um, that tear line along the base of the eye. Um, if you don't include that then often the eye doesn't look quite right. And then I've gone over it with the Kaput Mortem. And then I've been, I used Burnt Ochre on, and that was that lighter brown colour, as well as the Kaput Mortem to darken up and get those shadowed areas in. You don't want to do all the shadows with black because otherwise it will just look flat. You definitely need the the Kaput Mortem to help make that the black areas less flat. Now just blending out, this time using my number four brush. The bristles on that brush need to be trimmed. I find that after a while of using the odor solvent, the bristles tend to stick out in all odd directions. So I trim them and then eventually I replace the brush because the more the bristles stick out, the less um, control you have over the, where the blending goes. And you'll notice that um, with the Kaput Morton there, I was making sure that I followed the fur line. I kept my strokes short and I did start creating the, um, the texture of the fur. And when you do that, make sure that you do watch the um, reference photo because especially around the eye, you'll find that the fur goes in all sorts of directions. So you do want to make sure that you are getting the fur going in the right direction. Now just using the burnt ochre to sketch in the fur in that area above the eye. Now this pencil here is brown ochre 10% by the Luminance, the Karen Duroc 
luminance pencils. Um, it's one of my favorite pencils, actually. I've, I use it a lot. I have to get a new one soon. Um, and I find that one is very opaque, so it's good when you want to do highlights, which you don't want white highlights. You want just a lighter brown or tan. And also, in this case, I'm using it as a base for all the fur as well, which you'll see in a moment. It's a very good pencil. It's probably one of my favorite besides the white in the luminance pencil range. Now just going over that area again, using short fur marks. And I've used the terracotta and the burnt ochre with the polychromos ones. And just adding a little bit of highlights using the luminance brown ochre 10%. And when you're doing these little fur marks, make sure to keep your pencil really sharp. It's um, If you have a blunt tip, then you're going to get thicker lines and that um, won't have the same effect of being fine fur. You, you really do want the pencil to be sharp to get those little, little lines. Here I've just gone and blocked in that area um, above the eye. And I used a bit of, um, was it olive brown? Just a tiny bit there, just a very light layer. I didn't use that one elsewhere in the portrait. I stuck mostly to the brown ochre 10%. And then I'm going over it with the polychromos burnt ochre. And just keeping my lines short and watching the direction of the fair in the reference photo. And you might notice I'm, I rotate my pencil quite a lot and I do that because that actually keeps the tip I'm working on sharp rather than having the it flatten off. So if you keep rotating your pencil, you don't have to sharpen it as often um, to keep that tip sharp, but you, you do eventually. But yeah, if you keep rotating it, it helps to keep that the point that you're working from really sharp. I'm just adding in some more fur lines with the terracotta. And I find with fur, often it, you're not drawing the strands of fur, you're actually drawing um, like the shadows in between the fur, which is why you have lots of different colors all mixed in. And you don't necessarily just do one color, you, you have the, the different shades. So you've got the lighter color and then the you've got the shadows in between, which are the darker strokes. And just blending that all out. And make sure when you're blending that you're, um, especially in a lighter area like that, that the odorless solvent that you're using doesn't have pigment in it. Uh, sometimes if you dip your brush and wipe the excess off back into the bottle, well, it saves you saves some wastage. You will get pigment going into the bottle and it will discolor. So I usually have two bottles, one where I've kept it clear and then the other where I've done that and I use the other one on darker areas where it doesn't matter because that other pigment you won't notice, whereas light areas you, you will notice the stain from that pigment. I'm just layering more, keeping on doing those same, same three colors. Um, the burned ochre, terracotta, and the caput mortem. They're the main colours I do for the brown areas on this dog. Just getting some of those little bits of fur that go into the white section because this dog has a white bridge across its nose. So i um, just done a little bit of feathery pencils uh, across so that when I do the gray area, you've got a little bit of overlap in the color. Now onto the second eye, and I'm just using the black pencil. And if you can't remember if you did the highlight with both on both eyes at the start, make sure to do the highlight again. It doesn't hurt to do it twice with the white pencil that is. Um, Sometimes I do them twice because I can't remember if I did it the first time or not. So yeah, just using the terracotta and then the sanguine. I did 
I found that the sanguine was a little bit too red for this particular portrait in the fur. Otherwise, I probably would have used the sanguine as well in the fur. I'm just blending it out using the number four brush, but I probably should have switched to the zero brush because I, otherwise you get too much of the black being smudged into the eye if you use a bigger brush, especially that one because the bristles are a bit spaced out. And that's something to watch when you are blending, uh, that you don't blend dark colours like black into areas where you want it to stay light because that will um, mess up what you're doing. Make sure you keep the black in the areas where you want black. And then doing the next lot of layers. Just making that colour a bit more intense than that. Yeah, you see I'm using the little brush this time. <laughs> making sure I don't get that black everywhere. And also the other thing you can do is after you've done like the black around the eye, you actually can dip the brush into your um, odor solvent, swish it around to get the pigment off of it because that'll actually clean the brush before doing the iris part because otherwise the black will remain on the brush and can smudge it as well. So if you're finding that you're getting a lot of color smudging, that may be um, a problem. So similar to the area I did before, I've gone over with brown ochre and then I think I did a little bit of primrose in that section just to add a little bit of extra yellow to that side of the face. And then using the burnt ochre, just getting in that first layer with the with the little fur strokes and the area under the eye is quite dark so I'm blocking it in and same with that area at the back there just blocking in those shadows a bit more and then onto with the terracotta Lots of little tiny strokes. And that's the best way to build up fur is to do lots of layers with lots of little strokes. And that's how you get um, more depth in the fur as well. If you only do a couple of layers and that's it, you're not going to get that depth in the fur. That makes it look really realistic. You need all the multiple layers and then you blend and then you do more layers and every layer you can see a bit of from the previous layers and it just it goes together to make this, this beautiful effect. And then with a caput mortem, you can see me rotating it a bit in my hand while I work. Now I don't even think about it when I rotate the pencil. It just it just happens. <laughs> I'm so used to doing it automatically. I'm just darkening up that area, but still keeping those the pencil marks short for the fur. And with layering with colored pencil, I find that light layers are the best. Um, I'm not actually pressing that hard. It, if you keep your layers light, then you don't damage the tooth of the paper. And what I mean by tooth of the paper is that the paper has um, it's like a bumpiness to it, which if you damage it by pushing too hard, you actually flatten it out. And that will um, mean that you won't be able to do as many layers on top. So I find that I can go back even on that area near that first eye. I, I could add a lot more layers to that if I wanted to. Um, I don't need it at this point, uh, but I can do that if I want to. Um, whereas if I'd pushed a lot harder, I wouldn't be able to go back and do more layers. And in some in some drawings, you do need to have all those additional layers. So yeah, don't don't push too hard. Um, some people use a technique called burnishing, which I don't tend to use because I find that hurts my hand too much. But 
other people use burnishing to blend all the colours together. But that has to be used on your last layer because once you burnish, you can't add any more because that's pretty much flattening the tooth of the paper. So I find with the odorless solvent that I don't need to burnish. I think, I yeah, I really rarely. The only sort of burnishing I would do is on those white highlights at the very start. And that's only on that very whiter spot in the eye. I, I press pretty hard there, but everywhere else, it's very light layers. And I find I just keep adding layers and layers until it gets to the sort of texture that I want. Add layers, blend it out. Um, the more layers I put down, the less solvent I use on the brush and the further that the solvent goes. I find I use a lot more solvent to start with and then um, I use less because if you use too much on once you've got a lot of layers down, it, it can actually lift a lot of the pigment off and it will it can mess up. It's not such a big issue with fur, but if you're trying to go for a smooth look or like skin, if you're doing a, a person portrait um, or an animal with um, smoother skin, you want to be really careful not to add too much um, solvent on the pencil, on the brush. Otherwise, it will make it splotchy. And just erase some of the outline I had there especially because this area here is quite light so you don't want the outline showing too much in that spot it's not a big issue in other areas on the thing i don't worry about erasing too much but in areas where it's really light you want to make sure that those outline lines are not visible when you've finished so with this area which the fur is white on this dog in this area but there isn't actually a lot of white that I leave there, you'll notice. And that light grey pencil that I'm using at the moment is warm grey one. And that's the one I started off with, just doing little strokes everywhere, um, watching the reference photo to make sure I'm getting them in the right direction because they switch from leaning one way to the other um, part way across the centre of the face. And then I went over with warm grey three just to get some darker ones in and then I also looked on the reference photo and noticed there was a shadowed area across from the brows between the two eyes. So I've then gone over that with warm grey one solidly to add in a bit more shadow there. And then just adjusting the brown area using the brown ochre 10%. And that one's a good one for going on top of uh, areas to lighten it up doesn't have the same effect as the white because the white can actually make things look a bit flat because it's actually a tan not white it's good for um, doing highlights on dogs like this with this color and then just doing the ear pretty much a repeat of what I've done with that fur elsewhere and just paying attention to where the lines I've sketched in are because um, they sort of they show where I want the shadows to be and ears are a little bit funny they can they don't really make sense when you look at them as ears <laughs> they're all floppy and yeah you don't you've got to make sure you get the shadows in the right spots otherwise they'll look a bit funny human ears are even worse than dog ears <laughs> they look so weird when you're trying to draw them and just use a foot mortem to darken up the bottom area of the ear. This particular dog has uh, black tips on the bottom of his ears. So um, I'm just sketching in the black now to make it even darker there. And at this point, I'm more concerned with sketching in the colour than getting the fur texture in. I'm just um, blocking in those shadows. With the ear, it's not as important as on the front of the face to get the texture of the fur because the ears tend to look a lot smoother than the fur elsewhere. So that's why I've just locked in rather than keeping the pencils looking like um, fur. And just blended that out before going over with the 
Um, this one's the burnt ochre. And now I'm doing the strokes more. So I'm making sure like the top part where I'm just doing blocking in the bottom part because that, that gets a lot darker, that area. And then with the terracotta, I'm sketching in those little things, a little fur. And now using the kaput mortem to get in those darker areas and get that fur texture in. I find short fur is quite easy to draw for me. I am most comfortable doing short fur I'll, rather than long fur and hair. I find hair and long fur very difficult to get the the texture to look right. Um, but short fur I find is so easy. You just do little tiny strokes, make sure they're going in the right direction and you're set. As long as you've got enough layers, it looks good. I'm just blending that all out now. Not too worried about how much I used on the area with the Ola solvent because that just smudged it all together quite nicely. Um, had to redefine that bottom of the ear though because I accidentally used the brush and went over the edge. That is one thing to watch is when you are using um, the brush to, to blend it out is if you've got like especially with a white background, be careful um, using too much of the brush and smudging the black or the dark colour over the white background because you won't be able to lift that colour off very easily. So at that point, I made the ear slightly larger. I hadn't smudged it too far. But if I'd done a big smudge, then that would have been actually quite difficult to fix. So do be careful with the brush because you can smudge the colour into areas you don't want it to go. Now onto the rest of the white part of the nose. Um, I'm using warm grey one and I started just blocking it in around the edge of the nose but then I've gone back and done more stroke marks further up. And with white fur, I find it really hard to get enough pigment on the page to be able to blend it properly because you don't want to add too much because um, obviously you want white fur, you want the effect of white fur, you don't want it too dark. But if you um, use those lighter greys, you can actually put a fair amount down without darkening it too much. And if an area is actually white, you can use white pencil as well to get some pigment off on the page using that. And then just using the black around the edge of the nose. The skin around the nose is often quite dark. It obviously depends on the dog, but for this particular dog, um, the skin is black. So um, you can see the hint of the skin around the nose and that shows through the white fur. You'll also find with dogs with white fur that the fur is hardly ever actually white. This part of the fur, even though it's white, it's quite dark grey and that's because it's in shadow. Uh, unless the fur is in the bright sunlight, then it's, go it's going to come up grey. So do be aware of that. Don't don't try and make the fur white all the time. It, um, it, it'll make the, the portrait look very flat and not realistic. Now onto the nose. I'm just blocking in cold grey one. And I find the nose tends to be a cooler grey than what the fur is, especially for this particular dog. Uh, this dog had quite warm grey fur, whereas the nose is often has a lot more white in it and um, the cooler greys. So I just blocked in cold grey one, and then now I'm using my black pencil and sketching in. Um, where all the shadows are, making sure I get the nostrils in the right spot and that line down the bottom of the nose. You've got to make sure you get that because, yeah, if you don't have that, then the nose doesn't look quite right because they have that dark shadow line in the middle. I'm being a bit rough with how I'm sketching it in. I'm not um, keeping my pencil marks short, um, careful or um, that, other layers I'll do tight circles whereas I'm um, being 
quite rough with it. <laughs> I'm just sketching it in all, all sorts of directions. Um, I found, find that I can get away with this. Other people say you have to be really careful with how your pencil marks go. If you find that those sorts of lines are showing up in subsequent layers, then be a bit more careful with how you're sketching in the bottom layers. I find that with my method, I can do that and get away with it. Um, I've actually got quite an even coverage there, um, which other people may not get quite as well as I do. And that's just from years of practice. <laughs> I've definitely had to practice on getting um, a good coverage, even though it looks like I'm being quite messy with how I'm sketching it in. Now onto blending and again not being too careful with the nose, just getting it um, so that the white specks are all covered. And I'm using quite a bit of solvent as you may be able to tell from the number of times I go back to dip it in. Um, that's because I haven't actually got enough pigment on the paper for that. I just wanted to get those shadows in and blend it out to get rid of some of the white flecks of the paper. So then when I go back with the next layer, I'm not fighting against seeing those little flecks and wondering how much pigment I, pigment I need to get onto the paper. Now just using the black pencil again and sketching in those shadowed areas again. And watching that line down the center of the nose. You don't lose that. I, I do come back later and make it a bit more defined. Um, yeah, noses on dogs are quite weird shaped. Now across the top of the nose here, I'm doing sort of like a scribbly mark and that's because dog noses have quite a lot of texture. They have sort of like a pebbly texture and I'm starting to get the start of that with the black pencil and I'll come back with um, my white and make that even more um, textured as well. I don't worry about it on the bottom of the nose so much. It's mostly just the top where the top's actually catching some of the sunlight. So the texture is a bit more obvious in that spot. Now I'm going with the cold grey one again just to add a bit of sheen to that where the light's reflecting off parts of the nose. And remember, if you accidentally go too light with that, you can actually go back with the black pencil and darken it as well. Now I'm using the white luminance pencil to add a bit more of that pebbly texture. Just doing little sort of half circle scribble marks. Make sure that that dark sort of nostril part is dark enough because that's a very dark area of the portrait inside the nostrils. And onto the mouth area. So here I'm using warm grey 3 and just um, blocking in the area. The area of the um, below the nose is very dark and shadowed. So I'm just getting a nice even coverage with that pencil. And then I'm going over with warm grey 1. And you might think that's a bit of a waste of time because you can't really see it over the top of the warm grey three, but it actually just adds in another layer of pigment, which helps with blending. So I find even though you can't see it, it's actually quite handy to put it in. And that's some, some ways, um, if you're finding that you're not getting enough layers on those lighter areas, if you have an area where it, it is a slightly darker color, you can use a lighter pencil to add in more texture without darkening the area very much. No, I use that quite a lot, that little trick. 
Now using the black pencil to get in the fur marks. Oh, in this area is actually skin marks because that's actually, the skin is black on this dog. Um, and you can see it a lot more and but using the short strokes so you can see the the lighter areas between. They, uh, some of that, that black is also in shadow because the area is very dark from just the way the light is hitting the dog. And then blending that all out. Of all the fur colours, I find white is the hardest to do. Just because it's quite difficult to get enough pigment on the paper without darkening the area too much. So every time I get asked to do a white dog, I always feel like, oh, not again. <laughs> but, I mean, I love doing it. I love creating the effect, but it's, I find it a lot more challenging to do um, than the brown furs where you can just add lots of layers of pigment on there without causing issues. Whereas with the white areas, if you add too much color on there, it darkens it too much and that can be annoying. Now here I am going back with the white luminance pencil, but my pencil is very sharp and I'm just adding in lots of little fur strokes to give that effect. And you may notice that I actually made the area quite dark to start with. And that actually allows the white luminance pencil to show up more than what it would have otherwise. So that's something you can always um, try yourself is to make an area darker than what you were expecting and then to go over with the luminance pencil to add in little light spots, little light highlights. I'm adding in a few whiskers. Obviously the white pencil doesn't work on the white background very well. So started them off with the white pencil and then I'm going to finish them off with the warm gray one. I find the luminance pencil does do whiskers quite well. I used to actually leave gaps for the whiskers because and that was the only way I could get the whiskers to stand out. But I find that it never looks quite right. You can tell that there's been a gap left there um, when you're colouring in. Um, and I find it never looked quite right. Whereas being able to go over with the white luminance pencil, um, that really helps. Because it has it, the white luminous pencil is quite opaque, so it actually does stand out quite well, especially when you've got it really sharp. You can get a really good line. If you want those whiskers to be really white, though, you will have to actually leave the area white rather than trying to go over the top of the other colours. But I don't, I don't particularly think that whiskers themselves need to be stark white. Depends on the animal you're doing, though. I'm just blocking in the colours, the shadowed areas on that side of the drawer. And then I blended it all out. And that one's the warm grey three that I'm using. I'm just going over with little little short strokes. And with um animals, make sure you get those shadowed areas um, like that on the jawline. Uh, in the right spot that actually um, shows where the muscle structure underneath the skin is and also like the bone structure as well. If you don't get those that in the right area, the right spot, 
um, the face will not look right and while it might appear okay to you, uh, if you're doing it for a client, um, they're more likely to notice that. So if you've got that shadowed area slightly out, it might make the face look a little bit fatter or chubbier or the opposite, it might make it look thinner and in which case the, the client's going to wonder why you change the shape of the, fa the, the dog's face. So make sure you get those shadowed areas in the right spots. Now this part of the fur is the harder part because there's not the dark shadowed area. So I didn't blend it out as much. I just got those fur strokes in and left like the white of the paper showing through for the white, white fur. I did do a bit of the luminance wire on top of the grey along the edge area just to help make that a little bit lighter from that shadow. And now I'm back to working on the brown fur. And so as before, I did the layer of the brown ochre 10%, which is a luminance pencil. And then I'm going over it with the polychromos burnt ochre. And again, in with the shadows, there are uh, shadowed side lines um, going down along the jaw, and make sure you get those in. And they're the sort of things that you might miss, but make sure you get them in the right spot. So do watch out for them, especially when you're looking at the reference photo. And when you're doing your initial sketch, you might notice I had little dotted lines, and that that's to show that that's a shadowed area. I'm using the Kaput Morton to get that shadowed area in darker. And the other thing is to notice how the fur is curving away a bit at that point in the cheek. And that's because it's going towards the back of the um, head and towards the neck more and going down. So watch your reference photo to make sure that you're getting those sorts of little fur change changes correct because you don't want to get the fur going in the wrong direction because that will also show um, change the way that the dog looks and make it look a little bit odd. I'm deepening those shadows with black fur. Now on to blending. <laughs> I find that a lot of these portraits I do, especially with dogs where um, you've got a lot of the same fur colour, um, it's just a rinse and repeat. You work at what works in one area and then you do the same across in the other areas. You say, use the same method, so you do a base layer. Then you do the lightest fur colour and then you go darker and darker with the different colours. And you can add quite a lot of different colours into the fur to really make it look realistic. You don't just do one or two. And in this one I'm using the four colours plus black. And those ones are working perfectly for this particular dog in the brown fur. If the dog was a bit more red, I would also use the, the sanguine and some of the other more reddy um, red browns. There's also a luminance pencil called Burnt Ochre 50% which has a nice red hue and that's one I love for doing ginger fur. That one works well um, for one of the main colours in ginger. There's a few other ones that I've got. So depending on what sort of shade of brown, there's a lot of different colours you can add to make that fur really look like the um, the the subject. Almost went to say client then. Doesn't look like a client. It looks like a subject. <laughs> I'm going over again in the burnt ochre. Now onto the ear. So this is pretty much the same as the other one. 
If you find that um, after putting down some layers that you're losing where your um, outline is, because you don't want to lose those uh, dotted lines that you've sketched in. Um, if you find you start losing them, then go over them like I am now with a quick mortem or even you can use black, but be careful not to do too much black. Um, foot mortem works better for this particular dog because it's a good shadow color. So as you see, I just sketched them in so that now that when I'm going over with the burnt ochre, I'm not going to lose those lines altogether. And that's important to make note with any drawing is to um, use a color to cover those lines in um, so you don't lose them. The worst part is when you, you got got the layers down and then you realize that you've put some of the shadows in a slightly wrong spot because you covered up the line and then you had to guess where the, the shadow went. And that, that's where you can use things like um, proportional dividers to make sure that the shadows are in the right spot, but I don't actually have one of them. So I've heard good things about them though. <laughs> I tend to just, if I lose a shadow, uh, an outline mark, I just freehand and work out where it is using just looking at the reference photo. But it is a lot harder to get them in exactly the right spot that way. I'm just going over with a quick mortem to darken up the bottom of the ear. And when I'm drawing, I'm always looking at the reference photo, always. I'm constantly looking back and forth between the two to compare, to make sure that I am getting the fur and going in the right direction, making sure I'm getting the shadows right. Um, because even though you've got the lines down, you've got to make sure you're putting the shadow on the right side of the line. You don't want to put them in the wrong spot. So always refer back to your reference photo. It's very important. And this is more important when you're doing uh, work for clients. If you're doing wildlife artwork where the animal isn't someone's pet, more than likely if you get something a little bit wrong, like a shadow in a slightly wrong spot, people are not going to notice. Unless it's like really wrong, people are not going to notice. They're just going to say, oh, it's a tiger. And, you know, it might have a slightly chubby jaw or whatever, but people aren't going to look at it and go, oh, what's wrong there? If With a pet, though, um, you do want to get everything as close to the reference photo as you can um, when you're going for realism. If you're not going for realism, then do whatever you want. <laughs> But for my style, I am going for that realism. So I want to get all the shadows in the right spots. And clients will notice that. I had one client who, oh, a number of times I had to redefine. It was for the horse portrait I did of Isabella, the, that grey horse. And... I kept having to take it back because every time I went back, she was like, oh, the jaw's a little bit fatter. And I kept, you know, adding this tiniest little line because I didn't want to add too much. And then for her to turn around and say, oh, it's too fat now. But yeah, every time I took it back, she was like, oh no, it could be even even wider. And oh, that was a bit stressful. <laughs> but I got it there in the end. And it was just perfect for her. So yeah, but they will notice. <laughs> And certain clients you'll find will be more picky than others. Some clients are like, oh, yeah, that looks good. But other clients will be a lot more picky about details like that. you notice I smudged a bit on that ear as well. And that's... Or when I blended it and that's to do with that brush being um, all the bristles sticking out in weird directions so that brush is getting close to being needing to be thrown out because it actually did that smudge line and well I think for this dog I cover that up a bit but um, with the ground outside because I'm going to sketch in a bit of dirt around the dog it is a bit of a problem that brush because it, it's hard to get that crisp line along the edge now because it's yeah 
these replacing. So here I'm um, onto the neck area of the dog and I'm just sketching in all those shadows with the black pencil to make sure I don't lose my lines. And then going over with what is it, warm grey three. I've got all my pencils laid out in front of me so I can tell what I'm drawing in the picture in the video as I'm watching it. I find that if I've only got a written list that I have, I look at it and go, I think that's warm grey one. I can't tell if it's warm grey two because they're, they're quite similar. But if I've got them in front of me, I can tell. <laughs> so yeah, I did um, warm grey one as a base colour over the rest of the shoulder chest area and now just blending it out and this area I'm using a lot of solvent on the brush to try and get that because there isn't the pigment on the paper for that. And the brush is actually darkening the paper up a little bit because I'm using so much. I actually have um, a board underneath the paper which I use MDF board as a base. And as long as the paper is not on the board for a long period of time, it doesn't affect the paper. But um, I find that that actually absorbs some of the solvent. So in the areas where I've used a lot of solvent, you, when I pull the portrait off, I can actually see the mark of it on the board underneath. So I don't know if that helps with the, because I tend to use a lot more solvent than other artists. Um, and that's just the way I, I do it. Um, I don't know if that, if that having the MDF board underneath helps or not. I just use it because I was I had a big MDF board which I cut down to several sizes. I've got an A4 size and then one that fits A3 size and yeah I just found it easier to make a bunch of little boards for me to put my artwork on and tape down to. Every time I went to the art shop to look at the different boards that they had there I couldn't justify the price of that they were asking for them. <laughs> That's why I went with MDF. <laughs> I think uh, MDF is quite acidic, so if you were going to leave it attached to the MDF for a significant period of time, and I mean, you know, over a month or more, a significant period of time, then I would be more concerned about the effect it might have on the paper. I mean, it might be even that you could leave it attached to it for a year and there wouldn't be any issue. Uh, I haven't tested that. I'm just darkening up all that shadowed fur bit. And in this section, I'm just focusing mostly on the shadows and the, the shadows in between the clumps of fur. The fur is a little bit longer around the chest area than it is on the head, so I've got slightly longer strokes but then at the same time I'm not trying to get that same level of detail in either as you do on the face because the chest is usually that little bit further away so you don't need that same detailed level level of detail. So pretty much I'm just doing the same as the other white area, white fair area just with a lot more of the darker greys. And I did go over it with the white pencil to bring out some of the lighter areas in the black shadowed areas. Just doing the collar. And with this one, I start with middle phthalo blue. And just sketch in that colour across the whole collar. And then go over with black to darken it and get the... Um, shadowed side of it and then I go over with Helio Blue Reddish and add a bit more dark darkness to the blue and have the other blue not quite so bright it was a little bit too bright and blending that out with colours um, do pay attention to them don't just rush over them. This particular collar you can't see much of it and I'm not too worried about adding all the detail in on it. Um, other collars I've done I've had to add in a lot more detail to the collar you know if there's like little um, bumpy lines on the material that the collar is made out of um, you've got to put that in and things like that 
and the shininess to the buckle. Um, because of the angle that this portrait's on, the focus is on the nose and the eyes, not of, of the dog, um, not on the chest area. I don't actually want all that detail in on the collar. So um, I've just, it's there, but you, you're not focusing on that collar area. And then onto the legs, just sketching in the shadowed areas. Paying attention on the reference photo to where all the shadows are. You see that there. Um, because the, the light's overhead and there's a little bit of light coming in from the side, that the shadow is mostly underneath the dog, so on the inside of the legs, rather than one particular side. And this, that, that will change depending on what portrait you're doing. So always make sure you're getting the shadows on the right on the right spots. If they're on the, if you get them on the wrong side of the leg, it'll make the dog look really odd. <laughs> And the light source will be, it will just give it the whole thing the wrong feel. I find that a bigger issue when you're doing pictures with leaves and plants in them. Like you, you go along and the branches twist around, go sometimes this way and then that way, and trying to get the shadow coming all from the same direction. And oh, sometimes you, it's easy to make a mistake on that. And you just hope that those little mistakes are just covered up by, you know, the mass of branches and leaves that you're drawing. Just blending that all out now. And then onto the ground. So I kept all my strokes quite horizontal in this because I wanted the effect of, I wanted it to be different to the dog because it's the same sort of colour. I wanted it to stand out and for people to realise that that's the ground there, not, not the dog. So I kept all the strokes quite horizontal. I'm using the side of the pencil to get quite a good coverage um, but still being quite rough not really um, careful because I don't want the focus to be on the ground I just want it to be there this particular portrait needed um, some some ground because of the angle that the port the reference photo was taken off it, it is looking down at the dog a bit so I need it needed some of the ground in there and I did do a little bit of the burnt ochre and then black as well. And then going over with more grey. This one's the warm grey one. Wait. No, that looks like cold, cold grey one. <laughs> now blending it out. Now you'll notice that this darkens the paper quite a bit. That does actually um, come out uh, dry. It's because I'm using a lot of solvent in this point of it because I haven't got much pigment on the paper. And I just want a hint of the ground there. I don't really want to be putting lots and lots of layers down. So I used a lot of solvent to um, get that um, colour to blend well. But you see that dark sort of shadow caused by the solvent that actually does dry off and disappear. And just make sure that light, that leg stands out a bit from the background as well. And with this section, I'm not worried about my um, pencil marks showing. I want the horizontal lines to show because that'll give the effect of the ground rather than um, it. I'm not trying to get it all smooth. Just blocking in, making it a bit darker, getting that shadow in underneath the dog. And blending it all out. Adding a bit more shadow on that side as well. And then blending the ground out. 
you can see on the opposite side where the area I did first, it's already starting to lighten up. So you can compare the two here and see the difference between the two sides are. And that's just because I used that much solvent that it actually um, drenched the paper a bit. Which you do have to be careful doing that. You don't want to do that too much because you can damage the paper. But in this area, I wasn't planning on doing a lot of layers. I just wanted, you know, sort of the faint hint of the ground there. I didn't want um, the... I wasn't going to build up a lot of layers on that area and make it quite dark. So um, I didn't have to worry about the tooth of the paper being damaged by using that much solvent. But do bear in mind that the more solvent you use, you can actually damage the tooth of the paper by... Because it gets wet and then it gets um, it can get a bit squished if you go over it with pencil straight away while it's still damp. I'm just further defining those legs to make them stand out from the background. And there you go. And there's the beautiful dog patch. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and once again, thank you for supporting me on Patreon. Until next time, bye for now.